so it's day one of the Thrillerathon. Um, it's about half eight in the morning. I think it's day one. I can't actually remember if it starts today or like today at midnight, but we're we're starting now. I don't I don't care. It's uh, I'm starting now. Um, so I'm actually at a spa with my mum. Uh, we're doing like a an overnight deal packagey type thing so we had a meal last night and then um today we get access to like all the spa and a spa treatment and lunch and breakfast and all that so she's in the shower right now and i'm just waiting for her to get out and then we're gonna go down to breakfast um and then we'll probably take a book down there and start reading i brought with me the book uh, 13 so i'll be reading that today and showing you guys and that's my one for most anticipated i think um, and I also have an uh, audiobook on my phone for the drive back home, so uh, we can have a bit of a chat about that a bit later. Uh, I'm not going to be vlogging whilst in the spa, because one, water and phones are not mixed, and also, like, something costumes, strangers, logistics, really can't be bothered. And I want to, like, focus with on, like, spending the day with mum and reading, but we both have a stack of books with us, so there's going to be a lot of reading going on today. Fully expect to finish 13 by the end of the day. Should be a really good way to start this readathon, if indeed it actually starts now. So I'll see you later. Bye. <laughs> Hey guys, so it's now about 6.30 in the evening and mum and I are officially done with our spa day. I had a fabulous soothing scalp massage, which is why my hair looks crazy right now. Um, really good reading day. I managed to finish 13 by Steve Cav Kavanagh? I think, I think Kavanagh. Um, and it was awesome. Um, so that is my reading so far, is one book, it's about 350 pages. Um, I'm about to listen to an audiobook on the way home, which is about a 40 minute drive, give or take. And I'm going to be listening to The Singer's Gun by Emily St. John Mandel, which is for the prompt of a returning to um, either a book or an author that you've already experienced before. I've had read her one, uh, Station Eleven. This is the first thriller of hers that I've ever tried. So I'm going to be listening to that and then I'll be back at home and I'll grab some dinner. <laughs> Okay, so it is the morning of day two of the readathon. Uh, it's Tuesday, it's about eight o'clock. Crazy loud traffic outside, as always. Um, so I had a really, really good reading day yesterday because of being at the spa, like smashed through the book, got through some audiobook on the way home. Sorry. Um, but today, I don't really know exactly how much reading we'll be able to get done. Um, I've got like a ton of errands that I need to do um, and it's just gonna be kind of one of those days running around so basically my partner is away for two weeks he's a scout leader and he's on scout camp um, and so the house is an absolute tip from where he was packing for that there's like clothes everywhere there's a ton of washing that needs doing uh, there's no food in the house whatsoever and the bathroom kind of needs cleaning and the hall could do with being swept. So yeah, so in amongst all of that, in theory, I'm going to read as well. What I might do is I might read the book that I was listening to yesterday. Uh, it's The Singer's Gun by Emily St. John Mandel. Um, it's not very long, it's about 240 pages. Also, I'm not that impressed with the audiobook. Um, I don't really like the narrator. And so I can't see me trying to finish this in audiobook form. So I think if I go for that one today, then I'm the most likely to succeed with trying to read another whole book today. Uh, or I'm going to pick up the Mulberry Bush, I think. I think that's the next one that I kind of want to do. Um, so yeah, so what I'm going to do is spend the morning trying to sort some stuff out. First thing is throw on some clothes and nip down to the local co-op and... Uh, get some breakfast there's not even breakfast in the house how tragic is that um and then basically kind of assess so i will check in at various points throughout the day and hopefully reading will occur 
Well, I may as well introduce you to the rabbits, given that this morning I'm not really doing much interesting. So this little lunatic who's currently on the table in the living room is Toaster. Do not jump down there, baby. Ugh. Yep, that sounds about right. Um, <laughs> she's a girl. She's an idiot. And she likes to climb things, don't you, baby? Hey? And then this suave looking gentleman over here who is chilling and not being annoying. I'm going to find out what you're digging over there, Toaster, in a second. Is Zlatan. So we've had them for must be about 10 months now. Um, their birthday is on September 12th. So they are not even a full year old yet. They are my gorgeous babies who I adore. And, uh, and yeah, you'll probably get to see a lot of them in all of the reading vlogs. Uh, and yes, you did hear those names right. This is Toaster, as in the kitchen appliance. And that is Zlatan, as in Zlatan Ibrahimovic, the uh, footballer. Where are you going? Get out of there, you moron. They are house bunnies. We do not have a garden, so they live in the living room and reading room. And you're just gonna have a groom down in there. Yeah, I know, your sister's in a weird place, isn't she? How did she get there? You know, we're gonna get back. We're gonna go first. Mountain girl bunny. Dun, 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 dun. No, no, we're gonna go. Don't go underneath. Where are you going? You're gonna find her. You're gonna find her. Excellent. We've recently moved around a load of stuff in the house. So there's like boxes and bags that we haven't finished unpacking yet. Um, hence the reason why they're just jumping on a ton of stuff down there. It's all just like decorative things that I've not put back up since we moved around everything. So yeah, so uh, I still haven't really worked out the rest of the plan for today or any of my reading goals for today, but I thought you should meet the Fluff Puffs. So now you have. Bye! Okay guys, so I've just got out of yoga class. Uh, it was lovely. I've never been to this yoga class before. It's a new gym that I've just joined. Um, it was Hatha Yoga and we did a lot of inversions today. So being kind of shoulder standing and supported hand standing and all sorts of things, which has been really, really cool. Um, I'm now going to head into town and do some errands. So I've got to go food shopping. I want to go to Pets Home to get some stuff for the fluffs and I need to go and get a new bed sheet for our bed because um, I can't find our other one and the one currently on it really needs a wash so I figure treat yourself and I'm just gonna go and buy a new one so I'll take you along for my day during the whole time I am gonna be listening to the audiobook for the mulberry bush which is getting hella interesting very excited about all of the espionage going on uh, so stay tuned and I'll talk to you soon bye so I'm gonna vaguely attempt to continue with where's it gone the singer's gun which uh, I did start an audiobook yesterday, but I decided today to swap to physical form because I didn't like the narrator. And I'm enjoying it way more now that I'm the one reading it rather than somebody else. Um, so, yeah, basically, I'm going to try and get a chapter or two of that done. But I'm feeling so sleepy, like I'm blinking lots right now. So, I'm probably going to end up calling it like quite early. And this will be goodbye for today. Good morning. It's, uh, it's day three of the readathon. It's about half seven. Um, I need to get up. Uh, I have actually got out of bed already once. I went to let the rabbits out of their hutch into their... Um, uh, <sighs> Sorry, let's try that again, shall we? Uh, I have actually been up already. I've let the rabbits out of their um, hutch into their sort of playpen bit. So they're up and running around and eating breakfast and generally having a good time. Uh, I did read last night. I got another 30 pages or so down of The Singer's Gun. Um, it's it's starting to get really good. I'm really enjoying it. The, the thriller aspect of it. <sighs> thriller is such a hard genre in some ways. Like, you get your very conventional crime based thrillers you know the ones which have got the the dark scary um front covers and uh, are generally very um recognizable as thrillers and then you get these kind of more contemporary thriller type things where the um the focus of the story is a bit different so this one is about a guy who 
has a very shady past and he's tried to move on and set up kind of a normal life but it keeps dragging him down and there's there's stuff to do with human trafficking but not really and like there's people who are being forced to spy on other people and it's all yeah it's all very interesting so it has at least started to go down more of the thriller road because I think the last time I updated you he was just having an affair with his secretary which is like super boring and very predictable but it's it's up to its game um I think it's quite tricky to know how I feel about this one because Emily St. John Mandel wrote Station Eleven, which, as I mentioned in my TBR, is one of my all-time favourite books ever, and I think it's stunning. So there's kind of the shadow of um, Station Eleven hanging over this book, which makes it very difficult for it to do anything without me judging it quite harshly. So I'll be interesting to see what my opinion is by the end. But I also have two more of her books, so I think I'm going to read them fairly soon probably not in the thriller thon I doubt I'll get around to another one of hers but over the next few months I, I want to try and get to them so that I have a bit more of a well-rounded look at her writing style I think too when the first one is such a big hit for you it's always tricky you're kind of setting the author up to fail second time around which isn't fair and then gonna drive down and see my mum um, I'm helping her with the house uh, my grandparents died this year which sucks um but that's life and basically there's their house which they lived in for like 40 years um and we're selling the house and fingers crossed it's nearly gone through but we need to get rid of a load of stuff and there's a load of secondhand books that are like swanky secondhand books that mum wants to t me to take to a nicer secondhand bookstore in Cambridge rather than some of the charity shops back home um, because basically they'll just know more what to do with them. Okay guys, it's about half six in the evening. Um, I'm at my mum's house now. We finished up at the grandparents' house. Uh, now my car is laden down with loads of really, really, really old books. Talking like from the 1920s and kind of onwards. I did film like a little bit, so I'll be able to show you those. And in fact, you've probably seen that already. Um, and I've got a few that I'm taking back home with me. So I'll maybe sit down and show you them tomorrow. Um, and basically I'm now just working up the energy to... Uh, get in the car and drive all the way back to Cambridge. I've just been reading some of The Singer's Gun by Emily St. John Mandel. I'm now on page 147. It's picking up. It's It's got a lot better. I can see the similar kind of stylistic elements like Station Eleven, um, so I am enjoying it. There's been a few odd segues that I haven't particularly been on board with, but generally it's pretty good. Um, I probably won't listen to The Mulberry Bush on my way back home, feeling really tired and drained there was a lot of heavy lifting and driving around and dropping stuff off today so um I'm probably just gonna like whack on some tunes on the way back home because I think if I do end up listening to an audiobook I won't take it in and with something as complicated as this like spy espionage book that I'm listening to um I think I'll just end up missing like some crucial plot points so I'm just gonna leave that uh, I think I'm about halfway through it though I'm doing really well so I'll definitely have it finished by the end of the day. No, by the end of the week even. See, I'm knackered. I'm not even making any sense anymore. Um, So I'll check in later on tonight. I probably am going to try and finish The Singer's Gun tonight. I think when I get back home, I'll end up curling up with it and finishing it. Assuming that I'm not too wiped from the drive. It may just be crappy rom-com time. But yeah, so I'll chat to you soon. Bye now. <laughs> 
Hey guys, so it's now Friday. Um, basically, I got like no reading done yesterday. I just kind of had one of those days, you know, where you like borderline hibernate. Um, and I just curled up on the sofa, watched a ton of community, like literally all day, ordered some takeout, read a load of fan fiction on my phone. I've been like hardcore into Jeff and Annie since re watching community. So, yeah, so I basically didn't pick up a book and didn't do anything, which is great for a readathon. Um, but sometimes you just need these days, you know. Whereas today, I am. Um, I'm off to Welling Garden City to see a friend and I'm hoping to get to a bookstore on the way. So I've had a bit of a better morning, um, got a load of stuff done around the house. Uh, I've got a little bit more to do on the computer, then I'm going to chuck on some clothes because I am indeed just in a dressing gown right now. Just got out of the shower, kind of like about an hour ago. Um, and then I'm going to uh, drive over to Welling Garden City and uh, chuck on the audiobook. Um, so I'll probably get through at least an hour of that on the journey. I think the problem I've got with the reading at the moment is that both books I've picked are like espionage, spy, sort of um, subterfuge going on. It doesn't really have that same like hard hitting, crime, fast paced, body, body, this happening, that happening. So like in comparison to the first one that I read back on Monday, 13, um, which was so like, oh my God, with everything that was happening in it. And I kind of like absolutely tanked through it. These ones are really slow burn intrigue kind of thrillers, which I'm down for, but I think I probably shouldn't have read them like simultaneously. Um, I still think that I'm gonna get through the five that I wanna get through in total. So there's two other ones. Both of them are a little bit more like jumpy fast paced. So what I might do is if I can't seem to get through The Singer's Gun, um, I might just change it is in like start one of the other ones and come back to the singer's gun maybe on like Sunday. I'm rapidly running out of days. I think I actually started the readers on a day early. So I'm doing terribly given I started early. But we're gonna we're gonna say that yesterday was like a break from the readathon. I had like a, a readathon interval, shall we say. Anyway, I've got some lunch to have, some emails to send, I need to put on some clothes and some makeup and then hit the road. <laughs> So I'm now back at home. Um, it's really late. It's like quarter to one or something. Um, so I met up with my mate Alistair in Wollongong City and we like had a, sorry I've got the hiccups. Um, we had a really good chat. We ordered in some pizza and we just kind of chilled. And it was generally like a really, really good afternoon meeting up with him after we finished work. Um, and we stayed up chatting till like super late. So I was supposed to be home hours ago, but we just kind of, you know, you get in the zone, you haven't seen someone for ages and it's just like really nice to, to chat and chill. So we totally did that, which was wicked. Um, I got a bit of reading done. I did listen to the Mulberry Bush on the way there and on the way back. It is whew, getting political, getting technical. Um, I'm really not enjoying it as much as I thought I would. It's got nowhere near as much about Argentina as I thought it would be. Um, a lot of the politics, I think, are going over my head. I think it's just something that slow I need to see written down. I think having it in audiobook form is taking a slow burner and then making it an even, slow, even slower format and I'm really struggling with it. What I will say is the narrator is like top notch. There are so many accents. It's just this one guy. Um, I'll put down below whoever he is. Um, but his accents are really strong and that's really impressive. Like we've got a load of Russian characters. Um, there's lots of different south american characters and characters with various kind of latin american spanish kind of vibes and he's doing a really good job of getting all of those um so that's really cool but it's it's not really doing it for me and i also read about 20 or 30 pages of the singer's gun which again i'm just feeling really stagnant with right now like i'm not i'm not feeling either of them and i think that's why it's taken me such a long time to get through them like this readathon i was expecting it to be like bam 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 book every day and it's really not been that in the slightest so um i'm really hoping that i can kind of step up my game a bit tomorrow and sunday and just get some some last minute wins in because i'm i'm doing terribly on my tbr and i think it's these two that have just hit like a massive reading slump with 
Um, but yeah, so basically what I wanted to show you now was uh, I've bought a load of books in Waterstones today. I bought five and I also uh, found in a bag three books that I bought really recently over the past like week and a half or so, including one that is going to replace one on my TBR as to become uh, for the challenge which is like newest added to your TBR, which makes sense because it's the last one that I bought. That counts as a thriller. Um, so I'm just going to do like a quick book haul for you now. First official book haul on my challenge built into a vlog. That makes perfect sense. Um, mainly just because even though it's really late I'm feeling super wired. Like I've been drinking because I was driving I wasn't drinking tonight. Um, so I've been on like soft drinks and we we ordered pizza so we bought like some Pepsi and Fanta to go with it or Tango or whatever. And so I think I'm just on like a massive sugar high and I'm so gonna crash in like 20 minutes. But until then, you get a book haul and then I will read a bit more of The Singer's Gun until I end up in like a minor sugar coma and that'll be good. I'm gonna drink some water. So um so we're gonna we're gonna do this with this haul. I'm gonna gonna haul this for you somehow. I think if I flip the camera and just show you them down that might make the most sense. Yeah, let's clear some space and do that. Oh, it's me, hello. Damn, I look tired. Right, let's flip this camera. Okay, so these are the books that I bought over the past few days. So we have the one that's replacing my TBR and it is uh, One Way by S.J. Morden. Um, eight astronauts, one killer, no way home, dun dun dun. Uh, most of these were bought at Waterstones as you can tell because you've got the classic sticker there. Um, so this is going to become my new one for uh, most anticipated. No, I've read that one already. What's the what's the challenge? Um, like newest on TBR. So pretty excited about that. It looks really cool. Yeah, it's gonna be good. And then in uh, Tesco on Tuesday, when I was buying food shopping, I wanted past the books, which is a really bad idea. And I've got Artemis by Andy Ware. Yeah, we're gonna go with that. Who is the guy who wrote The Martian, which I loved. I thought it was an excellent book. Um, so this one is um, something to do with criminals on the moon, I think. Yeah, we, we've we like colonised the moon and there's a criminal thing going on there. So actually this could quite easily be as part of a thriller one. So I might, and like I've got two space thriller ones over here. Then I also bought in Tesco The Cows by Dawn O'Porter. Um, I know very little about this one. It popped up on somebody's... Um, Goodreads is like they gave it four stars one of my friends and I generally consider a lot of her um, book taste similar to mine um, I know nothing I'm very excited uh, we'll just we'll just see um, god knows when I'm gonna get to it and like the covers are super striking on lots of these at the moment then we get to my book haul today and I, I had a good hour minimum to kill in uh, Waterstones today waiting for Alistair to turn up so I went a little a bit crazy. Um, so the first one I found was The Bedlam Stacks and oh my god is this not the most freaking beautiful book you've ever seen and I don't know whether you're gonna pick up that in the light but look the page edges are blue. It's just oh stunning um, but I actually started The Bedlam Stacks an audiobook on my app Borrowbox which is like a audiobook um, app for libraries but I don't know what happened on mine basically I started this one and then the app kept glitching and it wouldn't save my spot um, which was so annoying so basically I kind of abandoned it and I've been keeping an eye out for this one ever since um, and it's now here and I'm super excited I did not know it's the same author who did The Watchman of Filigree Street I've not read that but I've been meaning to for ages and that's fun and um, this one is something to do with like an intrepid explorer and something to do with plants. And he has a limp. I got a bit of like a house vibe from him. And the audiobook was really good. So I'm I'm like super excited. I got I got like half an hour in. So probably only about a chapter, but it was wicked, so I'm really excited about this one. Um and then we have The Immortalists, another buy and get one half price by Chloe Benjamin. Again, popped up on Goodreads, can't remember much about it. Something to do with children who see a gypsy and then get told their future and how they're going to die and now they don't want to make it happen or they do I don't know, something like that um but really cool cover um been on my t-bar for a while i'm, I'm keen i'm keen it, it looks fun um then we have the boy on the bridge which is book two 
of um i don't know what the whole series is called but the first one is the girl with all the gifts it's a zombie-esque type thing a bit of a spin on um a particular type of bacteria that currently targets um bugs in our world it like infests them and turns them into zombies and makes their heads explode genuinely exists it's really cool david attenborough it was featured in like a david attenborough um documentary which is mentioned in the book um but basically this is book two and i've been meaning to so i read book one from the library um i don't actually own my own copy yet but they don't have book two in my local library and i've been meaning to request it from one of the other ones in like our county and i just keep forgetting whereas now i don't have to because i finally found a copy of it like actually um in physical world and this is the only one that i paid like proper book prices for if that makes sense everything else was either buy one get one half price or like the classic tesco four pound kind of book um but i think it's gonna be worth it then i asked for a recommendation of what book to get based on um some of my favorite books which i always love doing in a bookstore i always find it really interesting and they recommended this Rather Weird by Andrew Caldecott. Have I read anything by you? That that rings a bell. Um, but basically, magical realism uh, in the 1500s. Some kind of gifted children who are problematic. Um, I have no idea, but I really go for... The last few times that I've gone into a bookstore and said like, Hey, here's a list of my favourite books. What would you recommend like it? It's the books that I've been recommended have then immediately been added to that list because they've been awesome. Like that's how I found out about The Bear and the Nightingale, which has been one of my top reads this year. So I'm quite excited about this because generally the book recommendations go quite well. It's got like guilt around the edges here. Do you know what? Book pub publishers, book owners, words. Publishing houses are really upping their game when it comes to covers over the past few years. I so appreciate it. And then the final book I bought, because that one was a buy one get one half price and I wanted to get the deal, I got The Billion Dollar Spy by David E. Hoffman. And this isn't actually for me, it's for my partner. It's something to do with the Cold War and the KGB. Um, he so loves all of that military history stuff and geopolitics and etc etc it's not really my bag like I'm down for a bit of it but that's pretty much all he reads other than like football biographies or economics books he pretty much just reads about military history and he's been on a bit of a cold war Russian kick recently so I saw this and thought like ah, it's the buy one get one half price it was also book of the month um, which means that you get a free cup of coffee at the cafe which I had no idea that Waterstones do that, so totally go and check that out, because actually if it's a decent book, then you get a free cup of coffee, and that's like a total win. Um, but yeah, so I'm kind of, I'm excited about this, it's going to be good fun um, to give to him, even, that's what I mean, I'm excited to give it to Andy. He's still away at the moment, he's not back for another f week, which sucks. But yeah, so um, that's pretty much it. So that's all the books that I've been buying recently. There's quite a few. Um, they're probably, I'm not gonna bother doing a book haul as in like a proper one. Um, I just figured I'd show you a little bit and chuck on some ambient noise and read a bit more of The Singer's Gun. So good night. And I'll see you tomorrow for like book six? No, day six. Book one still. But day six of the readathon tomorrow. Tomorrow's a busy day for me, but I'm sure I can fit in some reading. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Love you. Bye bye. Okay, so it's Saturday morning. Um, it's about nine o'clock. Um, I managed to finish The Singer's Gone last night. It was fine. Like, I think it suffered for a lot of reasons um, because of both the books that I've read from Emily St. John Mandel before and also from the order that I read it. So it's a perfectly adequate book, but in comparison, I'm looking for all these flaws. Um, but I've read it, so book two's now down. Woohoo! Um, so <laughs> that's good. We're nearly at the end of the readathon, but I'm two in. Yay. Um, I'm going to attempt to get another one read today. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much the plan for today. Uh, fairly chill day, the sun is shining, it's gorgeous weather, everything is really good. I'm feeling fairly awake for me, which is pretty awesome. It's been a very sleepy week. So I will talk to you uh, soon. What's you doing, baby? You in a box? Hello. What's this?
Hey, sweetheart. <laughs> so it's like four in the afternoon um, I've had some lunch I've started reading I'm reading One Way uh, by S.J. Morden I am like 30 or 40 pages into it uh, it's the one which is about eight astronauts who they're not actually astronauts they're like um, current prisoners um, convicts who are being sent to Mars because they have like tech abilities and they can build stuff and that kind of thing um, and they're basically bas being sent up because they're expendable um, and I'm pretty sure one of them turns out to be a killer and starts taking out the others um, generally I'm enjoying it so far it's really fast paced it's got a good rhythm to it um, I like the characters so far and there's a decent amount of science in it which I really like uh, the back describes it as Orange is the New Black meets The Martian and I can totally see where it's coming from it's got a really similar um, tone to it so yeah so I'm enjoying it um, also the weather's turned like super cold and it's been all rainy and gross so I've chucked on a comfy sweater and I have a cosy blanket and I'm getting all cosy and I might go make myself a cup of tea in a second I'm feeling mega mega cosy so it's about 5.30, um, I'm about halfway through One Way. Uh, it's, it's good, it's really good. It's definitely far more spacey at the moment, but they're, they're starting to get a bit of intrigue and a bit of mystery, so I might be stretching slightly with calling this one a thriller. Like, the basic premise is that there is this whole, you know, oh, something's gonna happen, are they excellence or not, but it's taken over half the book to actually get them onto the planet and doing anything so it's fast paced in the sense that there's been a lot going on but none of it has been particularly um thriller-esque if that makes any sense at all but it's good like i'm really enjoying it i seem to have picked a load of books that aren't really technically thrillers for the thriller-a-thon which wasn't very good um so i'm about to go and cook dinner for myself i'm gonna make myself a nice bowl of chili um which sounds good and i've got some wine is lovely and yeah that's pretty much um just my plan for the rest of the evening is to finish off this book um yes that's pretty much it i'm also sat here with the bunnies i don't know if you can see her where's she gone there she is you say hello can you see her hello bobby is that you where's my girl hey you're licking my hand where's your brother gone so yeah, so cuddle time with the fluffs and then a bit of cooking and I'll chat to you guys soon. And that is book number three finished. Good morning. It is the last day of the readathon. Uh, I've no idea what time it is. I think it's about 10, give or take. Um, so my goal today is to completely start and finish one book and to also finish another book. I've no idea how realistic that is, but it will mean that I tick off five books for this readathon which is my goal so uh we shall see so i'm on page 70 of anything you do say um hello baby i've got a bunny on my lap i've got two yes yes indeed um it's pretty good so far it's doing basically the premises a woman accidentally pushes a guy down says thinking that she like he was following her um and she has the option there to either call the police and like 999 um, and then in doing so probably get arrested or to run away and conceal it so outside of the initial chapter of setting up the incident um, it's just alternating chapters between reveal and conceal I did it I finished it I did the impossible and finished it with time to spare actually okay so it's now actually Wednesday the readathon ended a couple of days ago but I totally forgot to film like a, an end bit of the blog because I ended up staying over at my dad's um, and we drank a fair amount of wine and whiskey and then I just crashed at his. Um, I did finish the Mulberry Bush on audiobook driving over to his which was my plan so I did complete five books. Um, so my total is five books four of which were physical one was audiobook which totals a hundred no sorry 1699 pages and I completed all five challenges. Um, so that's pretty much it for this vlog thank you so much for watching if you made it all the way to the end you're an absolute champ uh comment down below if you did manage to do that because i don't think anybody's watching by this point so hello internet if you still are here 
Um, I'm, I'm going to post my wrap up fairly soon of what I thought for all the books. Um, but generally, most of them were three star reads. There weren't too many that were were more than that. But it was good fun. It was a really entertaining first readathon. So yeah, that's it for me, and I will chat to you soon. Bye.